Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. And now, let's welcome your hosts, Blake and Mark. Mamacita. Don't stop 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 but no, far away. So out of the window, I'm beeping, hoping to see him in his place. Hope he won't forget to play his casting. Hello, and welcome to the Blake Town Show with Mark, episode number 487. I'm your host, Blake. And I'm currently actually popping my run sheet up on a box of gingerbread confetti cookie. Conf- gingerbread confetti cookie. It's actually gingerbread and gingerbread men as ninjas. So I, I'm currently popping up my run sheet on. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> um, let me bring on my co-host. First of all, um, the biggest of podcasting, Sal, is not here this week as originally planned. He's off dealing with some um husbandy stuff right now. So he'll be back in a couple of weeks. As I, I'll fill up on the schedule in a little while. I'll we'll be doing next month. Um, and the dog started working as we're starting the show, so that's always fun. Let's bring out our, my actual co-host, the man with legend, the guy in charge in charge of music this week for the opening of the show. Mark Dad, how you doing? <laughs> doing well. What are we opening the show with? <laughs> we are the... opening the show with the song "Don't Is That Santa Claus," which is a song I rarely hear during Christmas time. And the only reason it came back to me is the Amazon commercial. I'm gonna say this is the year that we're over that being overplayed. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather ha- have? I rather have a hippopotamus for Christmas. No, I rather not at all. Thank you. But well, there you go. go. I needed to do that now because the song was over. There you go. The song was only two minutes. So I give it that now. Okay, so since Sal's in here, we do have a special guest co-host today i'm on my own against the walls the pressure's building but no i will never fall instead of trying they hear me roar and now i see that i'm way better than before i never needed you at all think of your i'm gonna watch you fall down i'm living large now i never needed you at all think of your i'm gonna watch you fall down i'm living large now i never needed you at all let's bring on my beautiful wife, a social influencer and Peloton famous, Mandy. Welcome to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure who you're referring to, but you can just call me the person who placed a reservation for Friday. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, but when I say I'm my run sheet was hooked up, I have it on a I have it literally on the box that we got for CJ. The CJ got for Saint Nick today. It is Ninja Cookies sitting over here. <laughs> I meant that quite literally. So. So not only does it double as a wonderful treat, it doubles as a holder. Well, I thought it was funny that it, we, we we thought it was cute that it was two houses and two ninja and two ninja and two ninja ninja bread. We thought that was adorable, right, honey? Yes. Yes. And and they're called Bert and Ernie. I'm gonna guarantee you once you names them, that will not be their names. I'm gonna guarantee okay. that. <laughs> so anyway, what's getting to things? Let's we'll start right away. Um, uh, honey, you want to read South Park in our intro? Yes, sure. Sure, awesome. <laughs> uh, help the show and find all the podcasts you can find on the show and on the podcasts we work on at theblakeandstylshow.com. Mandy. You can buy their t-shirts, stickers, hoodies, and more from their Tee Public store. Click on the Tee Public link on their webpage or go to Tee Public and search The Blake and Sal Show. Hey, do we have our Blake and Sal Show with Mark Gingerbread Houses in yet? Not all items available. Thank you, honey. By the way, you can also get your Nadine and Mandy stuff, Mandy show stuff there as well. By the way, <laughs> for those who don't know that. Um, so let's go to break. We'll be right back. How lucky are we that we 
Have light so that we can see. Although the day is done. What a miracle that a spark lifts these candles out of the dark. Every evening, one by one, until the end of Hanukkah. Upon Want to make sure I um, wished our Jewish audience out there a happy Hanukkah as um, it has started as of when this show drops. So I figured I'd break out the um, Bare Naked, Bare Naked Ladies version of Hanukkah Blessings, which I, I'm not going to lie, I never actually knew this song until the Bare Naked, Bare Naked um, for the holidays album. So I always try to play this on the show. I missed it the last couple of years because, well, I think between scheduling and the fact that I don't have holidays on our calendar anymore because there's just too many of them, I just kind of missed it the last couple of years. <laughs> so there you go. Let me make sure I did that. All right. Quick plugs. Uh, first of all, Mandy's book, Children's book. I know I am available at all at, at, at all books. Please you can buy books. Amazon, Barnes Noble, and Arantia Publishing. Available in English and in Spanish. And you can listen to the Indian Mandy Show. Available on all podcasting platforms. Eventually, when they get back to their show, it in will 20... be. In, it will be in twenty twenty four. Promise you all. Fair enough. Um, I forgot to put this on here, but I will be on um, Wildcat Minute I'm talking about Hudson Miracle 3 sometime in the next week or so. I'm recording that episode soon, and it will air in the next week or so. I, did, I don't have a date, but we'll be on break. We'll be on our Christmas break, so I won't be able to promote it. So go listen to Wildcat Minute and hear me on there. I'll make sure the links are all on all our social medias when that goes up. Um, finally, as I just said, we are going to be on our little holiday break the next few weeks, as in we won't be doing our show, but we have shows banked for everyone to listen to in the next four weeks. They are taking a nice long break. Um, next week, you can actually hear um, Kyle, Matt, and Andy's coverage of Ponyville Cider Fest from a couple of weeks ago. Um, and no, this is not a three-part mega marathon. I narrowed it down to one show, so you guys can hear that next week. Um, the week after, on December 22nd, you will hear the fourth edition of Who Wants to Be a Bitcoin Millionaire? Um that missed out on this recording session, but Mike and Mandy were there for that show. I'm not going to spoil it, but that was a fun, fun sort of listen to. A laugh fest. It was it was fun. Um, December 29th, we will have um, our Wrestle Kingdom preview show, Dad, you and me. And we're going to sit down with Rich Fan. We're getting him in just under the wire on the 10-year anniversary season. Get him here before we end our 10-year anniversary. And finally, January 5th, um, need um dad and sally back together again and we will be doing our 2023 year in review show the next four weeks we have a lot of content you can enjoy here on the feed so make sure you come join us that being said i guess we should get right into things here and now let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling and because he's not on the run sheet and sal's not here just for the hell of it Fuck Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, just for the fun of it. He's not on the run sheet today, so there you go. Can't can you say something like fuck somebody else? Fuck them kids. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, those are now, I, I, I had to update the run sheet, but update the soundboard because I'm moving things around the computer. So I had moved things over and I put them right next to each other on the soundboard now. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so quick news and notes. First of all, let's jump over to AEW. Um, two stories, two things. First of all, um, QT Marshall announced he was leaving AEW under the terms that because apparently he wasn't just on TV, he did a whole bunch of behind the scenes. He was actually, I think, yeah, I heard he was like the number two man, Tony Khan, at one point. Yes, and he's leaving because he says the company is going way too far in the new Japan direction. Not sure what that means. Maybe this is way, way too much wrestling for his style. Maybe it's a continental classic. I'm not sure. Um, that any thoughts? Um, for something like this to happen, there had to be something else that sparked him leaving, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's creative differences. I'm not sure if it's salary. I'm not sure what it was. But now here's the thing. Um. QT was also a trainer in Cody Rhodes' Nightmare Factory. Now, whether or not he's going to continue doing that, I have no idea because that has not come up for discussion as of yet. 
But if he's going to leave the Nightmare Factory, then somebody is either going to have to come in and step up or Dustin may have to combine his training facility with Cody's. I don't know. I don't know. Um, honey, I'm just happy we don't have to do QTV anymore. You know, I didn't hate QTV. I couldn't stand it. I was done. But... I, I, I did. It was just, what's the word? Stupid. And I think that's kind of what he's referring to in the terms that it's going into a more New Japan style, where it's more about the wrestling and not necessarily all the fluff, which I can appreciate. Um, but I feel like there's a market for both and a show that has both. So, I, and the only thing I will say about that, good, a good point, honey, because AEW right now, obviously, the content training on wrestling with the Continental Classic going on. We're not gonna go through the bracket back is here, but by the time Friday comes around, people hear this Wednesday matches have already happened. But I don't know that we we do have the fluff. I mean, we have Time is Tony Storm, straight up heavy duty gimmick. We have the but well, we have the matches, but it comes to, we have the tournament. We do yeah, have a mix right now. It's a very, very small mix because minus Timeless Tony Storm, I don't feel like there's a lot of gimmicks anymore whatsoever. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, like the acclaimed, I don't I wouldn't even really consider that a gimmick. And I can kind of see where what QT is saying. It's very much copy paste. Like Tony Khan is doing exactly what New Japan is doing down to the G1. They just named it something else. Yeah, the T2. <laughs> That's and, exactly what you're calling it. <laughs> and at what point, you know, like he's partnering with ROH, he's partnering with New Japan. At what point, like the lines are so blurred between the three companies right now that I really don't feel like there are three separate companies. I mean, the champions appear on all three shows. Um, it, people are holding multiple belts from multiple companies and showing them. Like, it's literally just become one, like, super company. Mm. But it's not a super company because they're not as popular or producing the quality that WWE is doing. You would think right. that okay. going with your point by the way, honey, um so and Brian and Mox are both gonna be on Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, I I, I mean oh, Eddie. Matter. Eddie yeah. was in, in Eddie the is still, yeah exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean it, there's just there's no differentiation between the three anymore. And I mean even in the Continental Classic, you've got belts from multiple companies. Like at what point does somebody say they're working for AEW or that they're working for New Japan or, you know, like when everybody said, you know, oh, Will Ospreay signed to AEW. Like, it's not a big deal because he's been on TV before. If that would have been the first time we would have seen him on our AEW television, it would have been different. But it's just like a, yeah. oh, okay, cool. You just signed a piece of paper. That's how I, and he's not even on TV until yet, until after Arthur Hingham. That's the funny part. Exactly. So, like, I just, there's, it's nothing special anymore to have the New Japan wrestlers on AEW or AEW people on New Japan. It's well, just another day. I, I I think the couple surprises that came out were Kurobushi and Tanahashi. But even then, though, and, and, and Okada. Is, is, is Ibushi even, I think Ibushi's signed AEW now. He's not even an AEW Japan person anymore. The, the thing is, is you had the Forbidden Door and it was forbidden. But there is no forbidden door anymore. It's a two-way street. So, like, well, if they have another um, pay-per-view, door, pay-per-view please, yeah. don't, please don't call it forbidden door because there is no such thing as the forbidden door anymore. Let's just call it the revolving door. Yeah, the only forbidden door is WWE AEW at this point. That's the only yeah, one. We'll exactly. get to that in a little while. We'll get to all that in a little bit. <laughs> so, so the other exactly. question that comes to mind is this: is when the Continental Classic tournament first began. And Eddie Kingston put himself in it, and all of a sudden now he's putting up the belts he holds. Was that his idea, or did that can come from TK? I don't know. That's a good question. Probably TK. It is that he is that runs the thing. Because my thing is, wouldn't the Continental belt be more than enough to show that you won the tournament and not having? I don't know why there's a belt anyway. I don't know why there's a belt. Like why are there belts? Why 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 don't you make it? Why don't they make it a trophy? Like, you're going to copy New Japan. Do the G1 trophy. Do a C2 trophy like they did in New Japan. 
Okay, exactly. fine. Let there, exactly. let there be a belt like there was for the Owen Hart that it it's just a belt. It, it like Willow doesn't carry it around. Like fine. Exactly I don't fine, have an issue with the belt. Yeah. The issue I have is you have one person holding 900 belts like, like a Kenny Omega or whatever. Like it takes away the allure and it like other people are losing opportunities like they could be building newer stars with some of these belts like they have done with wheeler but they're not because they'd rather see you know people with belts around their waist and around their neck and on their arms like it just it loses something when someone holds all of the belts when in reality should they even be holding any of them like that's the well, problem. Like, there's plenty to go around, but there's so many gatekeepers that are just holding on to everything. And again, that's my issue with WWE right now with Roman. But we'll talk about that another day. But here, here is the other thing. If and and I'm talking to the New Japan Strong Belt. How long is it before New Japan says, you know what, we want our belt back and we're going to put it on one of our guys? And you have that, that there is no New Japan Strong now. There is no show. The show doesn't exist anymore. No, but New Japan can take the belt. I understand back. what you're saying, but there is no show. If there was a TV show, that's what I think. there's no show anymore. The show doesn't exist anymore. The show's over. So the, and, the belt doesn't mean anything. Right. So the deck is why you have it on the table. If, I agree. <laughs> Let me go say you know, so, so give it back to New Japan and they can basically create another belt for something else. Aye, aye. Not everything needs a belt. If, like, people I understand. Need to, oh, if people need to hold up their pants, they can go to Walmart. They don't need a title belt. The funny part is the reason oh, Japan it. had the Japan had the show some strong belts is because they had a TV show. Right. In America. That doesn't exist anymore. Like, why do the TV show have made sense? Like that, that's like saying, why don't we have a belt for collision? Don't put that out in the universe. <laughs> don't put that out in the universe. <laughs> Well, I'm figuring if you put a belt on for collision, then maybe the collision... Don't put that out in the universe. <laughs> Stop. Not everything needs a belt. I'm, I'm saying if you put a belt for collision, then maybe collision will go off the air or something. Anyway, uh, other thing I do want to just bring up, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, about the Ric Flair um, signing with AEW, that he's not actually signed with AEW, which still might be one of the funnier things I've read in a long time. Um, Tony Khan said, he's not paying Ric Flair. <laughs> AEW is being paid by Wu Energy Drinks, the company that Ric Flair um, runs, like owns, to get Flair on television. So technically, Flair is paying them! <laughs> so, now that this is clear as mud, <laughs> um, I don't know why Ric Flair decided to get into that type of industry. Was it He's going money. against The Rock and um, Air, um, Mr. Paul. Logan Paul. Logan Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's weird, but I think it's hysterical that he's paying them to be on television. That just That is the most Flair 2023 thing I've ever heard. So that, that basically, <laughs> Flair is paying himself. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely fucking amazing. It's it's as funny as um Sting going off on a tangent about a seventy five minute match and they say, "I don't care about that." After going off on a tangent about it. it's, it's one of the most random things. So That's, how long how long is it before we see commercials for woo? It's on all over the show. It's literally all the graphics on the show every week. I'm talking about besides the show. Well, that's all that matters to us. I don't give a fuck about commercials. We skip them on collision on collision. We'll then we're at home on Saturday most of the damn time. <laughs> All right, um, quick over to WWE. Before we get to the big story that I know Mandy really doesn't want to talk about. Um, okay, you know what? Let's get to the last. Um, the funniest story of the week came, and Mandy said this to me, because I, I have to put it on here. WWE had to pull all their Yeet merchandise. <laughs> because um, they tried to trademark it, and they couldn't trademark the word, not because it's a word that's stupid to trademark. No, 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 no. They're the independent wrestler. And Casey Scott Huffman, that already owns the copyright, and it's only since 2021. So they okay. have to show them up. So what we have is someone in WWE Creative that failed to do dil dil diligence on checking on this first and decided, ah, let's put the merchandise out first. Pretty much. So 
That so, is, honey, honey, any thoughts? I know you said it to me. I thought it was hysterical. I think it's funny, but at the same time, like, how did anybody copyright Yeet? <laughs> it's just, it's like a saying, like, like. Is, is, it, go, go ahead. I mean, it's just, it's a slang word. Like, I, it's. I don't understand how someone did that because that would be like copywriting. Yeah, like as long as 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 long as the courts give them permission and they okay it, then that's it. I, mean, I understand, question. but but what I'm saying is I don't understand how anyone got a trademark for it because it's literally it's a slang word that has been used far before 2021. The only thing it, I can think of, the only thing I can think of, and this is a valid one, is they're trying to copyright it for merchandise use. And someone already did that. That's probably what it is. They're not trying to copyright the word itself. They're trying to copyright it on merchandise. For use in merchandise. So, and someone already did that. So now... Did the they put a TM have... at the end of it? <laughs> you know what, when, when you have legitimate legal paperwork, you don't need to put TM at the end of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, that's so, how it works. Yeah. So now, the people that have already bought these merchandise... You keep now it. Makes it's it now more, limited edition. It's limited edition now. I was gonna say it makes it more valuable. So now when you they put it up for on eBay or something, they'll get more money for it. The next WrestleCon, it'll be all over the place. Those shirts will be everywhere during next WrestleCon for like 45, 50 bucks. So oh, what, uh, yeah, without without a doubt. Oh. And, and the thing is, is that that particular wrestler won't see dime one. Exactly. Um, so anyway, back to the two big returns that happened, and, and no offense to our truth, I didn't care nearly much as Sal did. Um, <laughs> I missed him. It was I delightful. Him. I don't understand why he's hanging out with Judgment Day. I don't understand why he's hanging out with Judgment Day. I, I miss just, little Jimmy. Bring little Jimmy back. What are you talking about? Little Jimmy's there. He's been there the whole time. For next to John Cena. Little Jimmy never left. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the other big returns, the important one, we talked about it before um, Before Survivor Series War Games was Randy Orton officially is back as a baby face wearing pants. Um, that I, I, I'm more thrown off by him wearing pants than even being a baby face at this point. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to see him back. I'm not going to lie. I, really, I, did, I, I actually surprisingly missed the guy. When he came back, I'm like, holy shit, I didn't miss Randy Orton. Um, he's officially on SmackDown now. As of this past week. Randy Orton is one of those people that you don't realize how much you miss him until he's been gone for quite a while. 18 months. 18 months he was gone. (laughs) And let's be serious. We honestly at some point didn't know if he was coming back. I don't think he knew if he was coming back. (laughs) No. I mean, the back surgery itself that he had done was very uh, labor-intensive and complicated. And... Especially his age, especially in his late thirties, yeah. and like, is oh, is he forty? Is he in his forties now? Like, he um, one second, I think he is. I think he's like forty-two. Or is he, he's, in, he's in his late thirties, early forties. I know he's. I know he was like. He is forty-three. Forty? He older than me? Holy crap! I didn't realize he was older than me. <laughs> Damn, he doesn't. He was look born it. in nineteen eighty. Wow, I didn't realize he was three years older than me. <laughs> he doesn't. He yes. doesn't look. Wow. And, and I, I'll, 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 I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be really honest when he came back on Survivor Series and he looked in phenomenal shape. So you can tell that he's been you know, working out, keeping fit and, and part you know, of the, to, his, part of the to, his, to his credit, there was no ring rust. Yeah, he's out of match already and he looks great and I can't wait to see more of him and then when I'm hearing to throw him into the Roman Reigns um, bloodline picture right away for the Rumble. Like he's gonna be facing. He might be facing Roman at the Rumble, which is intriguing to me. I mean, I, it's hard to believe Orton never had has had not had a match with Roman as a Tribal Chief, but Matt Riddle did. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. It's huh? Crazy, you know. So, yeah. something that's so right. any other way, I, I see. I see more creative storyline now that Randy's back. I agree. Um, and I, I and I can't wait to see I can't wait to see SmackDown this week where Nick all this is trying to explain why he, he why he's not going to punish Randy Orton for that RKO on Friday. <laughs> uh, he'll give him another one. What the hell? Um. Anyway, the other big return, the one that was teased, and then everyone's like, "No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen." And then Triple H decided to pull the, "We're going to play the credit 
which a lot I'm not gonna lie, but my still my personal hair moment super moments in NXT came from that moment when you just turn the credits on and then something big happens. I think the entire DIY storyline happened after the credit reel. Um <laughs> but the um we end the show, everyone's happy, everyone's celebrating Randy Orton and, and Team Cody winning war games. We're going to credit, they zoom out, and then Cold Personality hit and CM Punk returned. Um before I even get to anything else, I will say my favorite part was on TikTok the next day, everyone's reactions. I love reaction videos. And the reactions, a lot of reactions, everybody's like, holy shit, it's punk. <laughs> was incredible. And then seeing them play them on Raw made me so happy because like, holy shit, these are people actually watching TikTok and they're playing all the people on Raw, which is so weird and strange in 2023. Um, but that being said, CM Punk is now in WWE again. First time in 10 years. We just dealt with him in AEW for the last two. Honey, I was going to do first because you were literally cringing during his welcome back speech, which I'm no. convinced may have actually been. Or I, I'm convinced that I'm convinced because he's setting up a feud with Seth that that was over the top on purpose and he's going to end up being a heel at the end of the day. But go ahead. So, for what it's worth, I wasn't cringing. <laughs> That's what I was doing. That's true. And I believe it was the I'm home line, which got you. <laughs> like, serious, you're just going to go back on everything that you've even said in the past two years. <laughs> like, that, it, like if he would have been away and the AEW thing wouldn't have happened, I could maybe get behind this change and, you know, how he's a changed man. But if he didn't just spend the past two years bashing the shit out of the company... Like, it just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And at the end of the day, I know why Triple H decided to say yes. Like, he's a businessman. He's not dumb. And at the end of the day, you know, he doesn't really have to deal with CM Punk. He can have other people do it. You know, he could get to the arena early in the morning before Punk gets there. Or they can stay, have their cameras off on Zoom meetings so that they don't have to see each other. Right, honey? I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> you know, they they can coexist and not have to speak to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they can coexist and not have to speak to each other. Well, but what I've heard about the Monday Night Raw, Punk was on his best behavior and actually shook everybody's hand and had small talk, which is something no one's ever heard Punk ever do, ever. <laughs> and the other thing also someone did say, they don't expect this to, they'll be surprised if this lasts. They'll be surprised. It's a, like he, right now, he is that employee in the grace period who's just happy to be there and, you know, really glad that he got a chance. And the only way I can see him, quote unquote, behaving is if there is truly a behavior clause in his contract. I heard like, there is. <laughs> if that's there, then I can see it. But, you know, I don't believe the he's changed bullshit. It's just a matter of time before the bomb de detonates again. Because, you know, he, he pulled all of the bullshit he did with the time bomb or, you know, the pipe, pipe bomb, bomb, whatever. Pipe bomb, there you go. <laughs> in WWE. And then AEW gave him a chance. And obviously everything happened with the Elite. And then AEW gave him another chance. And then gave him a TV happened? show. Gave him a TV show. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like they allowed him to. They allowed him to take his ball and go to Saturday nights, and he still found a way to. You know, I don't see Jungle Boy as being difficult. Like I have, I had never heard anything about him previously that was negative, and so obviously this man brought out something in him, and at the end of the day. When we line up all of the different examples, there's only one common denominator. And at what point does this person realize that the problem is them and get the help they need? But instead, they just block everyone for 11 months. And then finally, when they come out of the woodwork, they decide that everyone should cater to them. And that's not the way the world works. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> and, and I am not disputing everything that you've said. I, my thing is, and I, I, I agree with you, that when Punk left the first time, okay, as he put it, it was a toxic environment between him and Vince. Now, here's the thing. Was it toxic because Vince created it, 
or was it toxic because you created it? Because my thing is, he was trying to undermine Vince by talking to the other younger talent and saying, you know, you're not being utilized properly. You're not doing this properly. Vince is hiding you. Vince is basically not catering to you. And basically, when he feels that you've outlived your usefulness, he's going to discard you. So Here's he's poisoning the, the young talent and undermining Vince's authority. And I think that's why it became a toxic environment. Here's the problem with narcissists is they will take a shit and blame it on everyone else. And their problems are now everyone else's problems because they're unhappy with their lives. So they decide to pick up and move back home. I, I mean, to WWE. And oh, we all have to deal Oops. with it. Oops. Oh my God. Oops. I'm taking that time codes. So during that little rant, um, this is totally going on my personal TikTok page, by the way. Um, but um, so we do have. Oh, hang on, hang on. I have to, I have to introduce our other guest. I just came in during the rant. So hang on a second. Okay. Okay. Let's bring on from the PW Torch, Kelly Wells. Welcome back to the show. How you doing? I was muted. Um, good, good start. Uh, I was, I was going to do my Okada arms, but um, I don't know how long I'll get to do that because Okada is not like a lock to stay in New Japan anymore. Um, so I guess we'll find out. Uh, a lot of, a lot of folks on the move. It's a bit. It's it definitely a lot going on. Um, Kelly, before we get into things, I do have to ask you a question. Um, who's the better co-host, Tom Stop or your friendly neighborhood duck? Oh, my duck, my yes. duck, Brian. Yes, Brian. Listen, Brian's the only one here in the room with me. So he's, he can hear me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, he's, he's over he's right there. Yeah, there's Brian. <laughs> so I'm going to say Brian. Got it. Okay. Uh, I had to ask. So, okay, you came in right in the middle of us talking about CM Punk. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by the weird, um, um, weird conversation we were having. So, your thoughts on CM Punk returning WWE since you just joined in the conversation? <laughs> it has genuinely stunned me how people, how many people did not know that he was a grifter before now. Every time Punk and Jericho do something that is purely like like trashing their old company build up just talk like they're in the best place ever it's amazing to me how many people are like i trusted him when he said that about the other company they are in pro wrestling the one place where authentic authenticity is like the the world's hardest thing to find and is not necessary to the business it's not necessary to be authentic and then people get mad that people are in a business that is a grift, that is a work, and that they were worked by them. And it's only the guys who use authenticity as a gimmick because Punk's authenticity has always been a gimmick. And they're sh shocked to find out that it's a gimmick. It blows my mind that that is, it, CM Punk has not changed. He's the same guy he's always been. He has always been this way. And it should not surprise anyone that he's in on the grift. But they bought into his character so well that it kind of shows how good he was at it. So I don't know how this is going to go. His stories typically don't end well. But um, maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. It's it's going to be fascinating to, as a guy who talks about wrestling for the edification of a lot of other people, I got to thank him because whatever he's doing, he's given us content. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't say it better myself, actually. <laughs> so we may mention... Go ahead. What can we expect from a guy who prefers Pepsi over Coke? Good God. That might be the worst thing about... Not just punk, but anyone. Um, oh, no. <laughs> what it is? I think the 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 movie that got it right the most is what is the one where Ricky Gervais lives in a world where you can't lie? Um, 
the Pepsi ads in that are Pepsi because Coke isn't available today. Yep. Because like, <laughs> like that's that's the <laughs> that's the gag on Pepsi. Um, I will say Cherry Pepsi is always surprising in how good it is because yes. the, the real thing Pepsi, no good. But that's that's just flavored swamp water. So I mean, you could cherry flavor anything, and it's fine. Right, pardon, add cherries pardon. to your own face, and it's going to be edible. Exactly. Pardon, pardon you guys, but Pepsi is the champagne of colas. Okay, just so yeah. just to clarify, Kelly, where is this coming from? Yeah, Dad, I wouldn't. Dad I wouldn't actually, I have a bottle next to me. Next to Dad's sitting from the table, and he actually does drink Diet Pepsi. So we <laughs> that is sitting next to my. Uh, Dad, the, the let's table just put it this way. Your mm -hmm. taste ended my water. when your ta your taste ended with mom. <laughs> that was the, that was the last really great decision you made. Damn. So. Damn. On that wonderful note, let's jump over to NXT. You're getting nothing from Christmas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's go to NXT. Um, we have two stories before we get to deadline. First of all, is um, Mackenzie Mitchell. She was released from WWE. Um. And surprised the hell out of me. I didn't see that one coming. Um, I, I for those who don't know, because I literally I said I said to Sal, Mackenzie Mitchell, um, it got re released. He's like, who's Mackenzie Mitchell? <laughs> he doesn't watch NXT. He doesn't watch NXT. Yeah, I was gonna say he doesn't watch NXT. And I'm like, he he's the backstage interviewer on NXT. She's fantastic, and she's married to Rick Joseph. And uh, <laughs> and that's still to these days through um, completely blew um Kelly's mind on the podcast when that happened on on <laughs> NXT. So. Do we have clarification on why she was released? No, but she did. She's already moved on to something else. Like I saw on her Instagram, she's already moved on to something else. So good for her for having a backup plan already. There you go. Um, Kelly, I know you weren't on PW Doc NXT this week. So um, your thoughts on Mackenzie Mitchell being released? Uh, this move is absolute garbage. But I will say I'm trying to read between the lines. And I think that there's a pretty good chance it's mutual. Um. I don't think that there, it does not seem like there's bad blood. It doesn't seem like this was like, she wasn't part of the reason I think this is because she's, she wasn't released with a bevy of other people. Like she wasn't released as part of a mass exodus where they, where they're typically like, I'm sorry, you're just not good enough to make the cut anymore. She was, she was like a one and done, like nobody else was released. So that makes me think this might have been some kind of mutual thing or asked for her release, had something else she could do. I don't know. Because out of all people on NXT, she might have been just about the one who was best at her specific role. Um, she's she's not even the worst person in her own relationship. And it is not a close call. Um, Vic, oh God. Okay, I'm not going to talk Vic. Because Mackenzie deserves better than that in this conversation and in life. But Vic, <laughs> I go hard at Vic. He's just he's just not good. Um, but he seems like a typical nice guy. I he is. I really he does. He seems like a really nice guy. And lucky for me, I'm not. So I can say <laughs> all this stuff about him. And like, what's he going to do? Be like, oh, I can win him over. Um, yeah, but who would be candy? Who would be with candy? <laughs> oh, I do. I do love the candy thing. You know what? I actually, he's kind of a lovable doofus. He is. There but you like, go. Much better. But you can't. <laughs> I mean, how many times are you going to say moon over moon salt when the move is called over the moon salt? And I'm like, it's so simple, Vic. And he cannot say Fraser. He refuses to say Fraser. He says Fraser every time. Booker will say Fraser. Uh, ring announcers will say Fraser. Nathan Fraser will say Nathan Fraser. <laughs> Vic's just like to hell with y'all. Fraser is easier. Um, <laughs> what, oh, the, 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 this this ain't being a character from NBC, <laughs> right? Yes, and, 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 and I know trademark. that's what you're <laughs> Yeah, it, it's 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 weird about Mackenzie. You know, one of my favorite little, little things about NXT for quite a while has been Mackenzie Mitchell and Wesley's friendship. Like they had fun chemistry when they were on screen. Her last moment was a high five with him. And now they're both off the show. 
It yeah, is a crazy. massive bummer. I also mm. loved how she interacted with Tiffany. Oh God, that was fun. She made like, Tiffany's character. She made it. it. She made yeah. it. Yeah. She made her character. She really did help her make that character. Yes. <laughs> so no, it should be missed. I, it just was weird not having her on the show this week. It was just weird because we're so used to it. And Kelly Kincaid, no Mackenzie. Like it doesn't not do that the same. I mean, you know, Kelly. She's not a Mackenzie at all. And I, you know, you got to have your own personality. But I think Kelly needs to be more interactive. I Every think time that, said. Um, I think that Mackenzie is up there with Renee Paquette in terms of people that not only do their job, but also interact with the the talent. And I think that's what makes them special is their interactions with the talent. Mm-hmm. Like Eddie Kingston is is fine on his own, but there's something that just turns up a notch when he's with Renee or around her. And Mackenzie Mitchell is like that with other talent. And I think that that's where she's going to be missed is the evolution of the talents backstage and not just in the ring. Like she kind of helped them bring out their promo skills. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think she made Mackenzie makes them feel more comfortable at ease where they're, they're not going to be judged. And, well, yeah, because and, she has a history of dealing with doofuses like Vic. So she can deal with it. anyone. There it is. <laughs> like, like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so proud right now. Tell so proud right now. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. y- yeah, I felt the same way with the whole comforting presence thing. Most wrestlers do not get into wrestling to act, but that's a big part of what they have to do, a, a form of acting anyway. So yeah, I've always thought that it's probably true that Renee and Mackenzie are probably just such calming presences that like it, it to some degree you forget you're being filmed because you're just like talking to a friend who's on your side. Um, and those don't come along that often. So you mentioned um, Wesley. Wesley, we did find out on Tuesday that Wesley will be out for eight to 12 months. He needs back surgery. No one saw this one coming. Um, I, I, I even, I, he walked in, he had a cane, and look at me, I'm like, is he a cane? Like, why does he have a cane? Like, it's <laughs> it's kind of like a makeshift crutch. It like completely it threw me. I'm like, why is he walking with a limp? Like, what happened? Like, he was fine last week. Like, what the hell happened? And we find out he's going to be out for close to a year. We just had Randy Orton come back from massive back surgery. So, like, now we have Wesley leaving us for a year for back surgery. Was it oh. something that happened during his last match or something that was just aggravating and finally it got to the point where he had to have surgery? Literally, we, I don't know anything. Kelly, do you any details? Because I don't know what we told on television. I don't know anything else. I don't. Um, I feel like something more should be out there about this. And and it's not. I was just as surprised as anybody when he hobbled out there. Um, I didn't see the show past the first 20 minutes for like personal reasons. Like, I know what happened, but I only saw, like, the first 20 minutes, and then life called me away. But um, but I was just as surprised as anybody when he hobbled out there. Yeah. So, we don't have to sleep. You, with all the moves that he does, especially his cardiac kick, I mean, you would think that all those times of momentum that maybe he may have tweaked something and really doesn't mention it because he's that type of person that – I can fight through the pain. I can fight through this. I can do this because I've done it before. Well, now all of a sudden it comes to the point where he can't do that anymore. And he has to have this surgery because if he doesn't, things will get progressively worse where he will have to probably leave the sport that he loves doing. That's true. All right. Well, on that note, he had to get pulled from the PLE show that is this weekend. And and that is NXT deadline. And um, not gonna lie, I'm looking forward to the show. They did fill out the show, fill out the hate review on, on the PLE on Tuesday's show. So let's actually go through the card. First of all, on the kickoff match, we have Axiom versus Nathan. Don't call me Fraser Fraser. Um this is actually they they did this match on Tuesday. It got thrown out because of the women brawling. And we'll get to them in a little bit. I think it's hysterical that a men's match got thrown out because women were brawling. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> that changed the pace. But um, we have this match. I'm looking forward to this. I told CJ, and he's like, he literally stopped. Like, wait, what? What match is happening? Because literally two of his favorite wrestlers on the on this roster are happening in a match. He's so excited to hear about this match. 
I don't know what to do here. I, I'm who needs to win more, Kelly. Uh, Fraser. Um, I think, but I'm only saying that because I think that Axiom is going to be the NXT guy who shows up on, uh, in the tournament on oh, the main roster. Okay, I like that way. I didn't think of him at all. Uh, I, didn't even, I didn't even think of him. And I think people aren't thinking of him because he hasn't been on the TV, but I think he hasn't been on TV because they've been preparing him for the main roster because he doesn't need really a lot of seasoning. Um, so if he's going up, then uh, then I say Fraser is the one who can use this win. If it's the other way around, because you could move Fraser up because we essentially know where he's, he's going to be plucky underdog, baby face, ricochet type. We already know that. So... And he's already pretty good at it. So you could move him up and have Axiom stay there. Um, but I think whoever, I predict this all the time and I'm always wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. Whoever loses this is going up to the main roster soon. Okay. Well, using Kelly's logic that who's going to the main roster and who's winning this match. <laughs> well, I think if you move Axiom up to the main roster and because you've got Dragon Lee already there, that may have like a kind of like a duplicate effect. They don't have, have to be on the same show, though. They don't have to be on the same show. That's true, but I <laughs> think if you put what like Kelly said, being in the tournament, it doesn't have to stay yeah. on right now. You know, but if you put if you bring up Nathan, I think people are going to welcome him more with open arms and for the type of wrestling he does he'll be more competitive. And I think for him to say, go against someone like Ricochet, I would love to see that match. And I want Nathan so badly to be on the main roster for what he can do, because I think on a broader scale, he can showcase his talents even more. I'm personally picking Nathan Frazier to win this, Frazier to win this. Um, I honestly, I think this is a toss up really. It's a toss up match. It's a, it's a hell of a kickoff match to have a toss up match. Honey, what do you think? Okay, so are we saying the person that wins is going up to the main roster? The, loses. the one who loses, but I'm using Kelly oh. logic, the loser goes to the main roster. Okay, I think Axiom would be going to the main roster because um, the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that Nathan is dating Thea, and typically they like to keep couples together. Um, I know it's not the biggest thing, but uh, that, and I also think it's just Axiom's time. I think he's kind of done everything he can, and I think there's a lot more that Nathan is capable of in NXT. All right, then. Uh, on to the main show with something. This is going to be the opening match based on what was said at the end of NXT. Um, Carmelo Hayes versus Alexis King. I don't care about Alexis King at all, so I don't care. But so I'm hoping, I, I have a feeling he's winning this match. I don't care about him whatsoever. Um, Kelly? <laughs> Excuse me while I continue to ruminate on the fact that Nathan Fraser and Thea Hale are together. I pay no attention to this kind of stuff. So oh, that see, was news to me. I that, got you on that part. Yeah, yeah. That You just broke that news to me. I did not know this. <laughs> um, good, good for them. They're both very pretty and they're both very talented. Um, so that's uh, that's cool stuff. I didn't know that. Um, Hayes it's versus... just it's something else that you kind of have to keep in mind too. Like, are they going to split up couples? Like, that's something you got to think of with Cora and yeah. Ron too. Oh, they're right. cute together. Um, <laughs> uh, as for Hayes and King, I don't know why I didn't figure out that this was going to be on this show. Uh, the real story is Hayes and Williams, and we'll get there. I wondered what they would do with Lexus King because it's clear that they character wise like the the story's built in you could you could take this character on paper and make him a main eventer the problem is the guy just ain't he he just isn't um i i wish <laughs> that he was i want him to get there i've been he, saying this since the debut <laughs> he's just not and and we knew that about him from what little we saw from him in AEW and it really was very little but he wasn't getting reps there either because they don't get a lot of, they don't have a PC and they don't do nearly, nearly, nearly as many shows. Um, so he's got a better chance of getting there now. But like what I said about him a couple of weeks ago on the show is he's not dead weight, but he's not like above average in any one single aspect of pro wrestling, other than maybe having an intentionally irritating beard. Like, 
Like he's he's good at a heel beard, but otherwise he's just kind of I don't know. He's a pesky heel that you know that they want him to be a Miz type, but there's just so 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 much work to do. Um, but throw a guy in there with a guy like Carmelo Hayes, and you're giving him giving him a chance to have a good match. Um, I actually think King wins this because a, he needs it about a thousand times more. Hayes is Teflon and they're trying to do something with Hayes and Williams. And I think this one of them is going to intentionally or otherwise cost the other their match on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And this is the match where I see it easier because you don't have a whole bunch of moving parts that you need to focus away from. It's easier to focus on when it's just a singles match. So um, it'll happen in one or the other, but, uh, but I got King winning this by uh hook or by crook. Well, the reason you missed this announcement, it was literally in the last five minutes, right before the final segment of the show on last night's show. And they didn't make a graphic. They didn't talk about it after it was announced. It was just announced. And then we moved on. So like, there's not even, I don't even, it's like literally on, um, there's a wrestling Inc. Like, Maybe happening. This match is maybe happening because they never made a graphic. So, like, you can see where you missed it. <laughs> honey, go ahead, honey. I see you want to talk next. Go. Mm. Lexus King is a perfect example of having the lineage mean jack shit. And, um, you know, you have a Charlotte Fra- Flair, you have a Braun Breaker, you have a Randy Orton, who, yes, they had the advantage of having a famous uh, father, Dominic Mysterio. However, yeah, Dominic is another one, but mm-hmm. they've done the work and they've proven themselves. He has yet to prove anything to me. Um, his facial hair does irritate me as well. It's just so stupid. I want to punch him in the face. Um, but now is his time. If he can't make it work in NXT, he just can't make it work. And again, that means the problem isn't where he is, it's him. So, um, however, like Kelly said, um, I think he's going to win. Uh, Carmelo doesn't need it. I think what's needed is to push the storyline along somehow, and that can only be with him winning. Dad? Yeah, I see uh, Alexis King. Alexis King coming up. Alexis, on... just Alexis King. <laughs> Alexis uh, winning this and then as the match ends he shows more videotape on how Carmelo is screwing over a trick. So he's NXT Anonymous that you're saying? He's NXT Anonymous? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he's not really kind of not denying that fact and storyline. And NXT Anonymous is he's like Stevie Turner and I'll be very happy. <laughs> so, I mean, he's going to cause more friction between Carmelo Hayes and Chuck Williams mm-hmm. and then the truth will come out and then you're going to have to have Carmelo play a role that hopefully he will be comfortable with and that is being the opposition for his friend Trick Williams. And we'll get more of the trick in a little bit. Um, next up, match I was announced last night. I've been looking, I'm actually excited for this match because this has been going on for a while. It is a steel cage match with Roxanne Perez versus Keanu James. I, I'm excited for this match a lot. Uh, I'll start with you, honey. Go ahead. First of all, someone needs to tell Keanu James that if you're going to say something like, the next time I see her, Make sure you don't say that when she is literally three cots down from you and can hear you say it. <laughs> it was amazing. I, that was so funny. <laughs> um, but and, and then I, of course she says, "Say it to my face." I know. I wanted to have Ava break them up, but it's even funnier. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I don't quite understand Ava's involvement, like how she's kind of in an admin role. Apparently she, um, from what I'm understanding, she's now like Shawn Michaels number two for now. Okay. Um, but regardless, I think that this is going to be a great match and I give NXT a ton of credit for having a women's feud um, this deep without having anything to do with a belt. Um, I think that just shows kind of the evolution of women's wrestling and it's, what I know I've wanted as a female fan is for there to be more women wrestlers to 
have actual storylines that aren't based around beauty or anything like that and that are productive to both of their characters. Um, yeah, you talk about it all the time, honey, that NXT is the best show for women's wrestling because they do so many women's matches that have nothing to do with what you're saying. It, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I do think that Kiana James needs this win more. Uh, Roxanne has had the belt. She's she's done things. And Kiana's been very, very, very close, but hasn't quite gotten there. Yes, she won the belt with Fallon, but at the end of the day, I really feel like it meant nothing, and it kind of had that, that weird build-up backstory that really didn't add to anything so um i think that keanu should and hopefully will win yeah i i am leading her the fact that roxanne is pretty teflon she doesn't have to win a match like this um and kiana i think kiana a year later after she had the stand-up performance at last year's deadline in the iron survivor challenge will finally win this match the big match here if you think of former champion i think you're right on this one honey i think kiana will win this for that very reason kelly I'm torn on this one because I feel like they both could use a win. Um, Kiana, because as a character, she needs it more as a, you know, as far as where she is in her career, she needs it more. And Roxy, just because she's lost a lot of big ones. Um, so I don't think she needs this much less than Kiana. Um, and I also feel like Roxanne's character has somehow become less defined while Kiana's has become more and more and more defined and clearer. Um, I too like it when they do secondary feuds with the women. I remember the first time they had one on a pay-per-view, I think it was Candice LeRae versus Io Shirai. And not only was that match on the show, but it was the best match on a stacked show. It was awesome. Awesome. I remember that. I, remember that. Um, <laughs> I was like, the the match that you could have not even booked ends up stealing the show. And you know, the fact that those women went so hard probably is no surprise because they know they're representing women's wrestling. So they, they know they got to show up, show out, um, and then opportunities befall them and their fellow woman. Um, so uh, I've actually got Roxy winning this one just because I felt she needed this so badly, but it is kind of a pick em. Um, I will add that Kiana for me is one of the best success stories in NXT of the last year or so. Um, she was doing really lame to almost embarrassing segments in a crappy looking uh like what was supposed to be her office and it looked like it was intentionally made to look like low grade porn like it, like it really had that look and um and she was just real real basic in the ring to the point where I was like I'm not sure she's being done a solid by even being on TV right now and they get and now she's got an attitude she's got a swagger she's got a move set and she's got an entrance. Um, and all of that stuff has been a real success story. I could see her going up and not being like being maybe a Carmella type. She can visit that main event. I don't think she's going to be a centerpiece, but I think she could have a long career. Um, and if one of them is more main roster ready, I would actually say it's Kiana, even though Roxanne is the better wrestler um, by by a lot. Like she's very good. But Roxy on the mic is still pretty rough. Um, yeah, Kiana's got the the mic skills for sure. And I mean, just think of when we first saw her with the stupid uh, accountant. Yeah, Gia. Yeah, stick with all the letters behind her name and all of that other bullshit. Yeah, Gia was. She definitely added to the air of it being low grade porn because she looked like she could have walked right out of it. Um, and she just quietly left the company and uh just like everybody found out when she just posted on instagram that she was in italy uh oh she's left the the business and the country um but yeah it it was and that all gets very that story got weirder but um but yeah it's uh 
I don't know. This match is one that I've almost forgotten about, which is weird because they built it up as a blood feud. And uh, it made that part of the four-way obvious last night. I was like, well, those two will take each other out of the match, leaving literally, the scraps. Literally. Whoever. Yeah. Yeah. And that, <laughs> yeah. They literally just had them write each other out of the match and had Fallon win, which I thought would happen. Um, but yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm eager to see how these two women pull off a match in a because we've seen Roxanne in a hardcore style match. Um and Kiana, this is big sink or swim moment for her. Dad, your thoughts. I think that this is could be a toss up either way. Um and they complement each other very well. And throughout the four way match, you could tell that basically right off the, the when it started that they were going to go after each other and, and tear each other apart. And for them to do that table spot together like that, the timing was just spot on. And it was it, at the time when they did it, you could tell all the attention was focused on them. And all of a sudden, you know, camera pans were quickly to the ring and, and it was well produced. Up. It was well produced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, it was, it was well done. And, and here's the thing and Kelly touched on it is either one of them at, at one point could be called up, but, and I'll use Kelly's logic. Whoever loses this match will probably be the next to be called up to, you know, the main roster. So with that being said, I think, I think Roxanne's going to win and it won't be too much longer before you see Kiana on the main roster. Do have the Rumble coming up. If there's going to be a time to call some NXT people up, it'll be at the Rumble. So, all right, uh, let's move on. We have the, speaking of people on the main roster, the NXT North American Championship match. It is um, Dirty Dominic Mysterio with Rhea Ripley taking on Dragon Lee with Rey Mysterio in his corner. Um, this match is happening. I, I, it's either going to be Dom retains or they put the belt on Dragon Lee and then Dom wins it back on Tuesday. One or the other, just like they did with Trick. Uh, I'm just sticking with Dom retains unless otherwise stated. Kelly? (laughs) Yes, I think Dom retains, but it's unfortunate. I think this was meant to be the end of Dom's story in NXT, and Wes coming full circle was the intent. It's a bummer. It's very, very much a Brutus Beefcake situation where they built the hell out of him to win the secondary championship. Then he took a major injury, was out for a long time, and somebody else is going to end up the beneficiary of that. Uh, And then Brutus never won that championship. At least Wesley's got his championship already. Um, I think that when Wes comes back, allow me to uh, trail off into different directions before I get to the match. Um, I think when Wesley comes back, even if it's not the plan now, I think when he comes back, it'll be straight to the main roster. Um, and I think that he will come back and he will face uh, Dominic wherever he is because they set it up to do that. And Dominic is in no danger of being turned face anytime soon. So Wes will be able to come back and be a baby face and, um, and go at Dom. Um, as for Dragon Lee, what a weird position to be in where your gimmick is currently guy who fills in for injured dudes. Um, it, it's a good thing that he can he's such a fantastic worker. You can just, uh, you can drop him into these spots. Um, but then of course you drop him into a spot for Carlito where, you know, he has to do the job um, because that's where they're headed with Santos Escobar. That's the right call, but it's a, it's a bummer of a, of a thing for Lee, but he got his payday for survivor series. So, you know, um, and this will be, this, this should be good too. Um, Dom trying to cut off the very exciting offense that Dragon Lee can provide is good stuff. It, it's just, I guess I'm wondering how married they are to the idea of this being the end of Dom's story. Because if it was, then they'll have him lose the championship anyway. And if you wanted, you could still have Wes show up and cost him the championship when he's tried to cheat to win it. Ah, I might be talking myself into that possibility. On the other hand, Dragon Lee's basically got one and a half feet in the main roster already. So, like, 
Nah, I think I, I think Dom retains. Um, honey, go. I agree. Um, being the guy that fills in for everyone can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse. And I think the curse is that he's not going to win this. Um, and I think that it's just going to set up the eventual feud that will cause Dom to lose the belt. Had they picked literally anyone firmly on the NXT roster, I would be saying that that person would win. Um, but I think they want that clear divide between NXT and the main roster, and they won't get that by putting the belts on Dragon Lane. I just realized I missed an opportunity on the run sheet to um, make it like a Raw versus SmackDown match on NXT TV. I might have missed the opportunity on the run sheet to do that. Um, I'm dad again. Well, this opponent for Dom was apparently picked by Ray to order to basically screw his son. Now, whether or not they carry out that storyline, who knows? Um, but the the way that you know Ray was talking up Dre and Leah was just you know phenomenal, like uh, the future of Uch Libre and everything. That's a Cole, well, that's Cole puts them over though. That's how Cole puts them over on Santa. So, but here's the thing, <clears throat> and I thought about this, is that Dom wins the match, but it's interference not from anyone from the Judgment Day. It is from Santos Escobar. Oh. And his, and his new entourage will be Angel Garza and Roberto like he's he's gonna reform a new version of Legato. Of, yeah. Yep. I, I like that idea. I mean, we were talking yeah, about so that. I. I mean, we were talking about that right when um when they had the Santos Dragon League match originally. So I didn't, didn't even think about Santos. That that's oh, been talked about that he's going to reform the new faction and using Angel and, and Umberto. And mm -hmm. since they're already there in NXT. Let's just like solidify this, and then now you've got a storyline that branches out between Dragon Lee and the new faction that happens. So I see Dominic winning by this type of interference, and then Judgment Day can say, "Hey, we didn't do anything. We're not involved." Well, Rio will be there. Rio already, already, but already. She, she, she won't. That. She won't do anything. It'll be another person or another people that are, will do it. And they're not going to basically say the Judgment Day paid us to do it. They're going to do it because out of spite. Because they have their own feud with Dragon Lee already. They have their own feud. Right, because Santos so. has already had that 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 heat from Ray, and now he wants to solidify it by doing this. You are saying that this is the future of Lucha Libre? I'm going to show you he's not. All right. Um. Next up, NXT Championship match. It is Ilya Dragunov taking on Baron Corbin. Never thought I'd see the day where I'd actually look forward to a Baron Corbin title match. But they're telling a lot of story here. The at the end of NXT this week was great. Like I thought the NXT and the NXT this week to set this match up was actually a really, really well go home segment. Um if this was if if this wasn't Shawn Michael the Triple H running the show, I would totally see Baron Corbin win the title here. Hundred percent totally see it. And then having Ilya Dritton win it back like at WrestleMania weekend. I don't see that happening here. I see Ilya Dragunov retaining and moving on to somebody else. I actually can almost see Baron Corbin returning to the main roster after all this. Um, Kelly, what do you think? Yeah, I... Uh, oh, Corbin's in this spot where you can put him in these matches, these championship matches, and he does a perfectly good job of selling them. Um... All the story beats are correct. Everything's good on paper, but nobody buys that he can win. Just no one. And the 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 reason they get away with it here is because this show isn't sold on a championship match. This show is sold on the uh, Iron Survivor Challenge. So that's why when the Royal Rumble comes around, you can run Brock Lesnar versus Hardcore Holly because... That's always the match people go to with that too. That's always that match. <laughs> I've done it. I've I've gone to that one myself probably 20 times. Um, yeah, you, you can run that match on that show, even though nobody 
thinks that it can happen because you at least you get your champion who's got to be on the show on the show um and you don't yeah you're not sacrificing something somebody that's a a bigger priority on a show that people already want to watch for a really cool gimmick match a really cool one um so yes kudos to baron corbin to finally winning me over i really really fought it tooth and nail but he is really quite good at his specific role but without the proper build i don't know how much you can plug him into that spot anymore and have it be believable he might be more at the plug him into the secondary championship level status at this point um honey go ahead i i without a doubt agree um even on the fact that i like his character and i never thought i'd say that um but we also need to give the man credit for coming back from happy corbin like you're not wrong you're not wrong (laughs) and i think like a lot of people just kind of forgot that happened i mean i would like to i just can't um but the growth is definitely there um he's taken a gimmick that made him the laughing stock and he's kind of made us forget about that um but i feel like he's always going to be the person that just comes up a little bit short and that's what's going to happen um on saturday um that good oh i never thought i'd say this but i would have to give the nod to baron only because um the way the storyline is set up with him has been very solid, you know, going through his past personas and characters. And now he's kind of got gone back to a little bit of the lawn wolf, but only it's more redefined and, and, and more, uh, I guess you can say in a, in a calmer type of personality where he doesn't get excitable. He gets loud, but he doesn't get excitable. And you saw it in how he's trying to push Helia's buttons last night and you noticed that he didn't get overly excited and he kept relatively calm tone and the way they're presenting that character is good and he's pointing out a lot of things with Elia about in in the personal life about how things aren't going well and how he should do this so maybe because of if you're talking like morals and values you got to give a little bit of the edge to Baron and hopefully that Baron would win. So you can go back to his family and rethink how things are going and see what happens from there. So I would have to say that Baron would, would, would win the belt. I'm trying to think you under, you, you misunderstood the main event segment on NXT, that it was the opposite was supposed to be taken from that. <laughs> the opposite was literally supposed to be taken from that segment. If you go by storyline, this would give Ilya the chance to kind of go correct his mistakes that the Baron one, had pointed out. But he's fighting for his son. <laughs> I understand that. The one thing I want to say, though, is two things need to happen. Like, Baron not only needs to deserve slash earn winning the belt, but there has to be a real reason to take it off of Elia. And whereas maybe one of those things is happening, whereas Baron is finally showing us that he deserves the belt, there's no real reason to take it off of Elia. And especially so soon, because we have to remember he hasn't had the belt entirely that long either. So, and for the buildup between him and Carmelo, I think taking it off of him this early would be it just it would kind of would be fizzle. detrimental. Yeah, it would fizzle out everything that they worked towards in him winning it. Because the way I'm looking at the few they had. Because the way I'm looking at it in this um aspect is you take it off Ilya, you put it on Baron, and it's not like you're putting it back on Carmelo or putting it on Braun. You're putting it on Baron and okay, he's not probably going to be there for the long haul, but it, you're putting it on someone different, and let's see who's going to challenge Baron to take it off him. Will putting it on Baron it? Corbin is almost the equivalent of when Dolph Ziggler beat Braun Breaker for no reason whatsoever, and then Braun won it back. Well, you know, That's what it feels see, like to me. Let's see where the storyline goes to. I mean, if they're going to end it, then Ilya won. If they want to continue it and branch out, 
then Baron will win. Yeah, I'm just saying that's what it sounds like to me. Um, okay, let's get to the headline matches of this show. The Iron Survivor Challenge matches. Let's start with the women. Tiffany Stratton, last legend, who, by the way, looked freaking insane power slamming Otis on Tuesday's show. Um, Damn it. Blair Davenport, Kiana, Kylie Jordan, and Fallon Henley. I'm excited for this. Um, Kelly, I'm going to throw it to you to explain to everybody, to remind people, what the Iron Survivor Challenge match rules are. <laughs> so all I've got to do is remember what they are. Okay. So, you know, it's funny. I tune out when they start talking about the rules because I'm like, I know the rules. And then I'm trying to think about it. And I'm like, well, I kind of know the rules. Uh, I should maybe be paying more attention. So everyone has a number that they draw. Um, you come into this one by one. Uh, first two, obviously. Um, and there are intervals between each entrant. But you're trying to score falls. Uh and those who are early in the match, the idea is they've got the most time with which they can score falls. But the later you come in, the more you can take advantage of people who have been fighting all the way through already. And then whoever's got the most falls at the end of a predetermined time. And uh, by the way, I'm not saying the time amounts because I don't remember them. Um, that that person, uh, that person's the winner. These were booked beautifully last year just unbelievable to the to the last moment where grayson waller had won he got way up in the face of the camera and you could see all four broken bodies behind him like all dejected because this bastard won uh it, it was just an awesome awesome uh final shot to the show and uh and what i love about this match and what i love about any kind of multi-man match multi-person match that can uh that can really is that they can really elevate somebody. You can make somebody a credible challenger in a single night. Um, and that's what they have the opportunity to do here. Because if Tiffany wins, no one's really surprised because she's been there. For me, Tiffany's lack of usage also looks like, yeah, we know she's ready for the main roster and we're just waiting for the right moment, the right event, the right whatever. Um it looks like that just because she has not been a focal point when she was the focal point of uh, of that division for quite a while. They're in the mode where they want to promote new talents um, and things like that and, uh, and get something out of those. Uh, did you say, okay, remind me who the heels are in this thing. Blair and Lash. And, tri- and Tiffany. And Tiffany. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you would you would have to think heel because Lyra is the champ. Um, and then you got Fallon. Talk about success stories. Fallon is just she's come out of nowhere. And I've just been a big yeah. supporter of hers. I just felt like there was something there. Um Yeehaw, bitch. Yeah, I mean that was funny. <laughs> um <laughs> She's yeah, she's got the right baby face fire. And um what I'm trying not to say is she's really hot, so I wanted her to be good, but she is. Oh, uh, she is. oh Blake agrees with you. I do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, like not even my type, but somehow slipped through the cracks. I, I don't know. Uh <laughs> yeah. She's got my... like this girl next door slash country girl thing like working yeah. for her, but then she's got a little bit of the spitfire, so she kind of appeals to like a little bit of everything. Right, right. She's she's, she's, she's... got like that Carrie Underwood kind of you know coming in very simple and and, and yeah. looks good doing it. Yeah, if Carrie had a potty mouth, then uh <laughs> maybe she'd be maybe she'd be Fallon Henley. Um, I think this one is wide open. I think you can really, really make a challenger. I do not think it'll be Tiffany for the reasons stated before. I do not think it'll be Kelani Jordan because I think her win in this match is going to be that she's going to really show off. I don't know if she's going to be somebody who wins a lot or even any falls, but I think she's primed for a for a one night gaining something in defeat kind of performance it could be this uh, year's keanu, keanu james yeah um 
I think I'll say because she's a little more ready, but not so ready that she's going up to the main roster. I think I'm going to go with Blair. I didn't know that's who I was going to go with before we started doing this. I think I'm going to go with Blair. And I would have said Lash was not on the table, but I too did see, even though I didn't get to that point in the show last night, of course, everybody posted that on Twitter. So I saw the uh-huh. slam heard around the world. It's it's fantastic. And that alone puts her in the conversation. So by the way, I did quickly look up um, a couple of things. First of all, the um, match is 25 minutes. The intervals are every five minutes someone comes out. And there is the penalty box. They're being the penalty box that's being pinned for 90 seconds. That was the other thing. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about the penalty box. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so if you get pinned, you're in the box. The penalty box for 90 seconds. It's, it, it, as, I, as I was joking around, it's, it's pretty much some of the rules from the King of the Mountain match. This, this match actually makes more sense. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Dad, go ahead. <laughs> With all the participants that are involved, um, you know, Tiffany hasn't been utilized for a reason that we figured she's going to go up to the main roster. So we eliminated her. Lash, I don't think they want to put her in the spotlight just yet. So we'll eliminate her. Kalani, she's a newbie. Do you really want to give the newbie a, a real good push and see what you can do with it at this time? Nah, nah, it's not the time. It's not her time. She only made her. So it comes down between Blair and Fallon. Do you want Fallon to win? And basically, she ch- challenges, say, uh, same Lola. Lyra. And, and then, Lyra. Lyra. I know he's saying that because Lola does have that um title shot as well. That's why he's throwing it out there. Right. So it, if you have Fallon winning, challenging Lola and saying, okay, if I win, I get the championship shot. and you Well, technically, don't. the winner of this match gets the championship shot. That is the winner of this match gets the shot. So That's how the match goes. So with that being said, I would say that Blair comes out winning and challenges. I, I mean, I that's the only way I could see this happening because I don't think you want Fallon to challenge Liar because you have, would have two baby faces. That doesn't make sense. So the only logical person to win would be Blair. I'll throw it to you, honey. Go ahead. I see you wanted to say something. Plus, you didn't get your pick yet. Go ahead. There's one big thing that both of you are missing with Blair, and that I, is I know Nikita what you're going to say. I was thinking the same thing. Nikita Lyons. Nikita Nikita huh. Lyons came back yesterday and beat up Blair, so she's got something against her. <laughs> Can't even Believe see me, that. Can't I'm, even not, see it. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. I'm just literally stating a fact. And Kelly's going, damn, now I know what I missed. There's there's no opinion here because it would be a negative one, but it, it, it's, a, it's a fact that she is back and she attacked Blair and oh. that I can see that playing in, into effect on Saturday. Yeah, she's um, not winning. She's not well, winning. Yeah. <laughs> I, see, I so see Nikita with, with, being more of a spoiler for a championship match. Not she's like- a spoiler for my life, okay? <laughs> yeah. Wow, why are you just, drinking your hand already there? Just when things are, you know, looking good, she appears on my fucking TV. Yeah. So with that you being want said, to drink some more hand right there. This is not new. This is not new information. <laughs> she has an ass. That's literally the only impressive thing about her. Like that's literally the only impressive and thing. And even then, there are people with better asses on this show. Exactly. So, so are, with, are, with, are you saying because she has a little badonka donk? Oh no, she has a massive badonka donk that nobody gives a fuck about her otherwise. It's like anyway. I say the same thing about Lola Vice. He's one. She, all she is is an ass. But at the end of the day, still on MMA training. She showed up, and I wasn't excited. I was just like, "Oh fuck!" Like I forgot about her. Like that, I think says a lot about her character or lack thereof. That being said, I really would like for this to be Fallon Henley's kind of coming out party. Um, I think that she's more than deserved it. She, I mean, for all of the shit that they put her through with that character and with the whole Briggs and... And the bar. That, Don't forget the bar. Yeah, the bar, <laughs> like all of that. I think like her growth is very comparable to Kiana's. Obviously, they 
kind of started around the same time. They've kind of been through that whole together. Um, <laughs> together. And I just, I think that you can give her a bit of an edge and still have her be a baby face. And I think Lyra's character isn't necessarily set, set in stone. So if we're doing the whole baby face heel thing, Lyra still has the possibility to to turn it around. You know, so what? I, I, you know what? I would think of the exact same thing. Because Lyra yeah. can be both. She's really yes. middle ground. If we remember, she started in, as a heel character. And this whole Becky thing kind of turned her into a face. So mm-hmm. she can turn right back. Fallon can be the baby face. Fallon's, in my opinion, going to take it. And because Nikita is going to take care of Blair. You know what? I was going the same way, honey. I was think I was leading turn Fallon Henley using the logic that Lyra can just be the person that takes on all comers. She doesn't have to be a she can be that middle ground. Remember who's running the show now? So Michael runs the show. I'm the perfect person to say you're you can be the middle ground person that takes on all comers. Looks like Ilya Dragona takes on all comers. It's make a difference. Get the face. It's make a difference. Same mentality here. So I'm going to look for the same reasons. I would say Layla is kind of like a female Braun Breaker. Uh, well, I was more comparison where the men and the women champion currently can face all comers. Okay. But, like, it doesn't make a difference. Um, Kelly, now with the Nikita Lions factor, and they want to change your pick? I want to I wanna change my interest in wrestling companies. Um, <laughs> God. I, yeah, it, it'll probably be Fallon in that case. Um, but you could put Blair over and then have the continuation, of course, be Nikita costing Blair her championship match. Um, God, I'm just mm. Vic says, Oh, the, the women's division is about to get a whole lot better. And I'm like, No, the fuck it is not. Like, it's going to get so much worse. Like, she's a black hole, a black hole. God, she, nothing. She brings nothing. I'll do a positive. I heard rumors a lot that Corey Jade might come back on Saturday. I heard that. <laughs> so that's good news. <laughs> I'll do that yeah. one. Cor- oh, Corey Jade, my, my okay. old nemesis. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. All right. All right. I heard that rumor this morning. I thought that was pretty cool news. Dad, so. did you ever hear the story about how Cora Jade, before she was Cora Jade and she was Elena Black, she and I had verbal fisticuffs at a BCW uh, women's only show. Yeah. BCW yeah. BCW yeah. women's only show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fun. I heard that about fun. that. Yeah, that was the no, that, that, That's because you. So basically, you can say you put her on the map. Is that it? There you go. How do you mute? I'm just you saying go? that shortly <laughs> after that, she ended up getting signed. So, so, so she should be thanking you. Yes, she's welcome. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. Um, let's get to the men's match. I have a challenge. It is Dijak, Trump Williams, Josh Briggs, on um, Broad Breaker, and Tyler Bate in this match. And can I say, as much as Booker T drives me fucking crazy most of the damn time, and Kelly was going off on Vic earlier, and I've got off, I've, I've literally gotten in trouble on social media for my dislike about Booker T on commentary. Him during Trick Entrance makes me laugh every single time. Yeah. Not gonna lie. He gets me to chuckle every time. I don't know where to go with this yet, so well, I'm gonna Kelly first. Go. Sorry, um, I'm getting over Nikita. Uh, we, it, are we on? Are we on men's? The men's. We're on men's. Yes, yeah. we're on the men. <laughs> yeah, I, I for me, this one's more straightforward. I think we are close enough to WrestleMania season that whatever they're doing with Trick Williams, it's time to do. Um, I think that this is his moment here. I think that everybody will get plenty of shine. Uh, Tyler Bates, like. I would say four, maybe five years overdue to go to the main roster. Um, he should be there. And uh, and yet somehow he is still not overly well defined. Actually, hang on but, a second. Um, I have a, I'm just before, before you continue, I had a theory that um, Butch is going to call Tyler Bate for help since he doesn't have anyone from his faction currently helping him. Sure. And that'll be Tyler Bate. Oh, oh, I, I had that theory on Friday. So continue, continue Kelly. Continue. That works for me. And it's an easy place to put him. Um, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't I don't think it would matter at all who was in this match to me. I think that this is Trick's win, uh, match to win. And I think the reason they filled this up with big dudes 
is to make it look that much more impressive when trick who's a big dude goes over um so it's it's amazing like last year they did a lot of high flying stuff in this match this year it's just meat on meat um and it's gonna be it's meat on meat and tyler bait yep <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so like he's supposed to be standing in there with uh with meat anyway. That's that's kind of what he did, um, the British strong style. So it's gonna be a loud match. Um a, a match that's heavy, if that word makes sense. Um but I I feel this is potentially the most predictable match on the show. You could have trick cost. Uh, have mellow cost trick here um, and not do it the other way around. And mellow's more likely to be the heel regardless of the way they go. Uh, he's just so good at that trick can do it. But I think that trick is surprisingly good at being a fiery baby face. Um, like had no idea how good that was going to be until, until it started playing out. Um, but I think this is tricks coming out party. I can't, I cannot see this going any other way. I just had a theory. Trick wins Austin? this match. Trick wins this match. Um, there's a February NXT appeal that they just announced. Veterans Day. They just announced it. They do Trick versus Carmelo at that show for the number one contendership. And Trick beats Carmelo there. And then you have Trick go on against Ilya at the rainy weekend show. And I think I would see it the other way around where Trick gets a match for with Ilya and Carmelo costs him the match, Trick finally flips his shit and it's Trick versus Melo at the biggest show of the year. Either way, either, either way it works. I, mean, either I way think you get away with it either way, but I think yeah. Trick Melo deserves to be on that WrestleMania weekend. Fair enough. I'm still sticking with Trick winning those as well. So, um, uh, honey, go ahead. You, you're next. I agree. Um, it, it's got to be tricks coming out party. It, they've alluded to it. Um, and I honestly can't think of anyone else in that match who is more deserving. Um, obviously, Tyler Bate, but I think they've got other plans for him. I just, for the same reason I didn't want Tiffany to win, that's the same reason I don't want Braun to win. So let's hope that they don't screw this one up. I have a weird feeling this is going to be Braun's, and I know we've been saying this for a year, <laughs> this is going to be Braun's last PLE in NXT, and he's going to pop up a light at the Rumble. That's where I have a feeling it's going to happen, because the next PLA after this is the Rumble. So, um, that go ahead. The odd man out of this situation is Dijak. I we haven't talked about him at all. <laughs> Dijak, to me, is still kind of one-dimensional. No matter what persona you give him, he's one-dimensional. He doesn't get or doesn't show a lot of emotion, a range of emotion. Uh, you know, he doesn't do a lot of other type of moves, which makes him, to me, just one-dimensional. I mean, you could name like three moves he does, and he'll do them, and that's it. And he doesn't branch out. Uh, the vigilante persona he's got, if that's what you want to call it, he just you don't you don't buy it. He's trying to sell it, and you're not buying it. So he's gone uh, from match. He gets eliminated. Uh, I have to go with trick winning. I yeah, this is his coming out party. If you want to do it the character right in the storyline, this is where you do it. You pull the trigger and you solidify Trick Williams. And then what happens is this as the story goes on, Carmelo's part of the story starts to unravel. Trick discovers it, and then you have the heat between the two former friends on UK. You want to settle it? We're gonna settle this in the ring. Boom. And you can't culminate it. But I believe that Trick will get that match for the belt. And eventually you're going to see Trick with the belt. We'll get to there down the road for sure. On that note, I believe that is it for this show. Um, Since Al's not here, I get the excuse to play this. 
For more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube, go to theblinkandsellshow.com. Don't forget to comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. All right. Since we have a special guest host today, honey, what are we closing the show with? Uh, Shake Up Christmas by Train, who we are seeing on Friday. Yes, when you people hear this tonight, um, we're going to be seeing Train on acoustic tonight with... um. Who else is going to be on the show? I want to tell everyone about the show we're seeing. Uh, Johnny Resnick? Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls and Philip Phillips. Uh, it, it's exciting for me because Train becomes like only the fourth act I've seen multiple times in concert. So There you go. Um, that's the thing. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And if you have a local independent wrestling organization where you happen to be living in, please patronize these people. These are young men and women that are coming up in the sport of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. They want to show you their whole package of what they can do, their promo skills, their persona, their wrestling skills, the moveset, everything rolled into one because eventually they want to reach for that brass ring that will take them to a major wrestling organization that will hire them and show them. These people would love to entertain you, so please go to their matches. Be entertained. They'll take their mind, you know, they'll help you take your mind off your troubles for two, two and a half hours, and you'll be leaving there laughing, maybe crying, maybe a little bit of both. But do this and do this safely. And, you know, we all are adults. So act respectfully toward each other. A little kindness goes a long way. Uh, Kelly, plug the light, go. I am Kelly Wells. You can find me on social media at Spooky Milk or at SpookyMilk.Games. You can find me on PW Torch uh, covering NXT modern and eight years back and uh, often doing New Japan stuff. And in my day-to-day -day life, I am uh, one of the managers of a collectible shop where we have a guitar signed by every member of Train. Ooh. Wow. That just, that just made Mandy happy there. Um, <laughs> Honey, anything you want to plug here, promote? Anything you want to throw in here as we're finishing up here? Um, you can find me on social media at Kirby Knockout. Uh, you can buy my book and check out my podcast with my bestie from New Jersey, Nadine, whenever we get back to it. This was a special treat because I actually had a break in my busy year end for finance. So you're welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you both. And, and, for coming and, on. And, and, and me, you can find me mostly all over the place when I'm walking around shopping, doing things. You know, I'll talk Everybody to you. Never say his home. Never say his home. If you're not at Walmart or the pharmacy, you will not see him. So you go. with that being said, Blake, wrap us up. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Next, well, thank you, by the way, both of you, Kelly and Andy, for coming on today. Next week, um, as I at the top of the show, start our Christmas break shows. We will have the coverage from Kyle and Matt in LAS. Yes. <laughs> Andy. I'm um, talking about the 2023 Porterville Cider Fest. That being said, let's get out of here. Let's go enjoy our Christmas break. <laughs> Was the duck's name Brian? See you later, Brian. Bye, Brian. Oh, I'm like... Quack, quack. I'm like... I'm waiting for Dad. I'm Mark, I'm Mark and, and that's Brian the Disco Duck. And you've been listening to the Blinkus Hatcher with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you so very much. Goodbye and good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs> Fuck them kids. Oh.